Happy Sunday, everybody. So as you may have watched yesterday, not every single one of these are going to be uh, <laughs> actually good decks, right? That's the problem you run is that sometimes people uh, manipulate in their MMR and maybe it's just my meta, you know, maybe it, maybe it is a good deck after all. I, I don't know. Um, but yesterday that, that deck just felt like it was a little bit off for the criteria that I hold myself to, right? So uh, if you're new here, what I do every Sunday is go over off meta picks. So this week, the meta being defined as Orsov Life Gain, Boros Convoke, Azorius Control, Mono Red Aggro, Teamer Control, Mono Red Prowess, Boros Humans, and Mono White Humans. So I look for a deck that's not one of those eight. And then I also look for decks that were successfully piloted to Mythic and had over a 60% win rate. Usually this leads to a good deck. Not always, but uh, this week what I wanted to do was uh, look at some of the last some of the cards that we aren't going to get to play again. So um, this is the mono blue tempo deck that is a budget deck a budget deck that I highly recommend. And the premise of it is to start off with some sort of one drop and then be able to ninjutsu in a mono uh, moon circuit hacker. Man, I can't speak right now um, or a prosperous thief and then use the artifact synergies off of the Spyglass Siren or the Ginger Brood or the High Speed Hoverbike to um, enchant it with a Zoetic Glyph or turn it into a 4-4 with Unctus's Retrofitter. And then we have Fading Hope and Machine Over Matter as the only form of real interaction outside of tapping with the High Speed Hoverbike. But this deck works relatively well, uh, for, especially because it has no rares or mythics. So it's been my like go-to for anybody new wanting to check out Magic the Gathering, I'm always like, you should check out the Mono Blue Tempo build. The problem with it is, is that all of these cards up top here are rotating in um, 10 days <laughs> or less. Um, they're rotating on July 30th. So this is kind of the last hurrah for the Mono Blue Tempo. And the other thing that I like to do is I host, or I, I always put up a poll that you guys can vote on for which one you would like to see showcased for the gameplay video next Saturday. So the num uh, number one will be Mono Blue Tempo. I think I forgot to mention the previous list was piloted by uh, Kij Kuro Krau for 76 and uh, 40 for a 66% win rate. So, and there were other people that I also see I saw successfully piloting Mono Blue Tempo into Mythic. So it looked like a really good good week for the Mono Blue budget build. Um, another one that I'd like to uh, showcase here is the Esper Midrange list by Sour Diesel. Went 55 and 23 for a 71% win rate. And uh, this is another one that's not going to survive rotation. So this is kind of the last week that we get to play with it. And um, it's very similar to what we see a lot of the best of three builds for Esper Midrange, except we're bringing in Adeline Resplendent Cathar isn't usually included in the best of three lists. And then we also have uh, the Lord Skitter Sewer King, which is usually put in, uh, usually combined with the virtue of loyalty and as well as the wedding announcement for this kind of go wide pump, which this deck is not doing. We also have three copies of Shieldred the Apocalypse. And then we have Duelist of the Mind and Deep Cavern Bat, as well as the Tiny Bones, the Pickpocket, which is one that I don't I haven't seen a whole lot in a lot of the Esper midrange in at least in best of three. So this is kind of like a unique take on Esper midrange. And I'm really curious to see how it would perform for me on the best of one ladder. The third one is Jeskai Control by Shoku. And um, I liked where this one was going. So um, Azorius Control is one of the kind of meta decks. So Jeskai Control is kind of cheesing it a little bit, kind of like including Rakdos Aggro when uh, Mono Red Prowess is one of the popular builds. Um, but it's enough of a different deck by bringing in the variation of the uh, red mana. And then also we get an additional sweeper. So instead of the temporary lockdown, Brotherhood's End. And uh, we also have the Lightning Helix, which helps stabilize against Mono Red and the early aggression. And as far as what cards are rotating out, this one, uh, the three copies of Depopulate, which could be like Sunfalls, and then the three copies of the Wandering Emperor. This one's really going to be a hard one to figure out what to replace in Azorius Control. Um, and then just a little, you know, the Neon Dynasty lands are leaving, and we've got the uh, Spara's Headquarters for fixing for the three-color space. <laughs> Although, kind of an interesting one to include the blue-white-green one. Anyway, um... 
the we've got one copy of the Stoic Sphinx, which helps up against the other Azorius control matchups. Same with the Cryptic Coat. These both can be kind of problematic for the mirror match. Uh, we've also got a full play set of counter spells with the No More Lies and the Three Steps Ahead, and three copies of the Phantom of Interference, so 11 total counter spells. And then we've got Deduce, so if they're playing around the counter spell, we can draw instead, get lost to hit Planeswalkers, as well as go some Enchantment Hate. And then uh, Brotherhood End does also destroy all artif uh, artifacts with Mana Value 3 or less, so there's a little bit of artifact hate available there as well. And then we have two copies of Intrude on the Mind, and this one I've seen kind of being explored as an alternative, as a way to um, kind of maybe be a replacement in a sense, uh, in, in a different way than Memory Deluge, um, because it does give you that dig, and then you can separate it out into the piles, and then one goes into your graveyard, and then the other one goes into your hand and um, you can get a lot of interesting value out of this um, depending on on how you're it's, it's always going to it's going to be like a draw two and a three three flyer or a two two flyer and a draw three if you separate it out that way but in certain circumstances you can also put it in as like a you know draw five or create a five five flyer which sometimes your opponent can just can't uh, let you do so i thought this is an interesting inclusion and um, worth exploring and then the fourth list that I'd like to put up on the poll this week is Naya Discover. And partly it's because Angel Fire Ignition and Fight Rigging are going away. And so this is the last time to kind of play around with that combo. Um, Angel Fire Ignition working particularly well with the Pugnacious Hammer Skull, giving it the vigilance so that it doesn't matter if it has a stun counter on it. And then also Fight Rigging with the uh, Hammer Skull allows you to immediately get the Hideaway 5. And so this Discover deck is really trying to loop a lot of uh, fight rigging loops and if you have Elish Norn then everything triggers twice and you've got the discover off of Geological Appraiser as well as Quintorius and the uh, Trumpeting Carnosaur and so this one is deciding to run a Tali some lists decided to cut that one out um, push pull is one that I haven't really seen a lot in the Naya space so I thought that was kind of a, a fun inclusion to explore as well as the Anzrag um, the guacamole quacamole <laughs> um, this one just can absolutely overrun your opponent. And uh, so kind of giving you an alternative win condition to the discover value loops. And uh, then we're also losing some fixing for the space with the uh, Vow and the Midnight and the Streets of New Capenna leaving for the Naya space. So um, want to get one last rep in potentially with the Naya Discover deck. It was a close runner up in the uh, uh, previous weeks, I think losing only by 1%. So um, this would be, you know, <laughs> there was enough interest maybe this week it'll win the poll. So um Hope you like the decks, and if you uh, like this sort of thing, remember to click like and subscribe. I try to do one of these every Sunday uh, for specifically off-meta picks. And then if you're interested in the best of one and best of three more standard meta picks, I do one of uh, a review every Monday, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. And um, then at, throughout the week, I try to do daily Magic the Gathering uh, content. Sometimes I get it done, sometimes not. Mostly focusing on just like gameplay videos and every once in a while draft stuff. <laughs> so this last weekend, I also did my draft guide for Bloomboro, and I'm excited for the release of that uh, coming the 30th as well. So um, yeah, remember to place your vote in the community tab. And uh, thanks for being a part of my community. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will catch you all tomorrow.